we have gotten to the point where we are ready to install pretty much the transmission on the back side of the engine but before doing that there's some things that we need to install here to make it happen I'll just talk through it as I go through it uh, it will be pretty self-explanatory but you do have a starter over here and you need a way well something for the starter to engage right couple the starter to the crankshaft so you need a starter ring gear and you need a signal plate to uh, from which your senses can read that your crankshaft is actually turning so I'll just walk through it and in normal fashion just talk about it as I go through okay let's do this here is your starter ring gear usually installed this way yes over here and you have a locating pin which unfortunately was broken on mine but still I should be able to still install this so I'll make sure this is well located wherever it needs to be the locator pin helps the helps the sensor know where in what position or rather what what bank is being fired basically just to accurately locate the the crankshaft the reason is this the starter part of the ring gear is all teeth so that's pretty easy to deal with but the signal plate it's actually pretty unique there's some teeth that are longer than others and that is the kind of stuff that the um, the start the crankshaft needs to communicate where exactly it is turning so when you have this at a at a particular point it does actually it corresponds to a different mark that makes sense and I think you just have an, an equal number because this is not exactly 90 degrees here they've got their ways but so before doing that there's something else something rather important that we need to install this spacer here because once you put this you won't be able to slide this over and this is pretty important as a spacer between the engine and the transmission so let's install that there are dowel pins over here one's here the other one's right here which will hold this thing perfect that's good then next I'll install this over here if you install I mean you could clock it wrong by the way it's just that especially if your pin happens to break for some reason yeah you will probably get constant codes with your check engine light flashing okay make sure the surface is make sure the surface is clean there's nothing preventing it from bolting down evenly okay so what just happened here oh i see it doesn't usually cause a problem i guess this time it's because it's lower it's tilted this way Just gonna wipe it just to make sure everything's good on both surfaces so you see how much effort needs to go into making sure this thing is well prepped you guys might remember the fiasco and the decision the back and forth I was having with this rear main seal the good thing about this engine and this system is that this rear main seal is not really loaded so to say it's not flooded you know especially the top part the part I had questions about it's not really swimming in in oil so less chances of leaking these guys don't usually have leaking problems the guys that have a, an upper and lower oil pan and the oil pan is like right you know dividing the the seal in half that's just bound to have problems okay so install that but again before I do that there's something else I wanted to mention and to to add here once I install this I need to find a way to lock it hold it in place so that when I'm installing it it doesn't move around on me remember the flywheel uh, the ring gear removal tool that I bought I've talked about this in a different video but this is what I use to lock it and what happens is this it, it's mounted to the oil pan down here and it just locks so that this does not turn around so that's what I'm gonna do you could use the uh, the crank bolt crank pulley bolt but just much well since I paid so much money for this tool why not use it 
All right, so I'll remove the bolt those back there. I'm gonna, oh yeah, that's right. I need to lift this to be able to use this tool. It's fine, I'll be able to do it, not to worry. Let's do this. Uh, lift this by hand. Yeah, I can do it. Set everything down. And if we can, I'll just do it from, from the back side the proper way. This way. Just don't want to crush my hand while it's over there, you know? Okay, so lift. Down it goes. I could or would or should have done this later, but I wanted you to see what I'm actually doing. So it might make it a little challenging to slide the the crank crank um, the signal plate over. So in this case, I'll just remove it. At least you know what this does, okay? So let me let me no, I'll take my chances with it. Let's leave it there. So I guess a small sacrifice I'm taking. I'm making to be able to show this video in the detail that I want to. So there's the first thing. There's the ring gear. I'm hoping that the teeth mate properly. Yeah, it works. It slid over the teeth over there, so and the teeth are what prevent it from turning. So that's good. Then use this one here. And see what side had the contact. Like this. And then I've got these 14 millimeter bolts. And according to my cheat sheet, according to my cheat sheet, those are 62 to 68 foot pounds. that I have. Make sure that I get the good ones that are not on the verge of stripping. That's rather odd for me. I usually go clockwise when I'm tightening things and counterclockwise when I'm loosening things. So there you go. I mean I don't mean just righty tidy. I mean that I actually turn things. I install them in a clockwise manner. It just helps me remember things. Okay, so I've gotten eight of the best. And when you have talking about things like lug nuts, when you have five of them, it's pretty easy to skip over, right? But what do you do when you have eight? An odd number, six lug nuts, four lug nuts. Those are kind of hard to work with, right? But eight, eight is actually an interesting number and it works just fine. So this is what happens. One, I'm starting right here above this locator pin, right? Skip two, is how I used to do it. Skip two. Skip two. Skip two. Skip two. Skip two. Skip two. And that's it. You got it. Did you see that? There was something off. It wasn't fully seated. So... to get the torque crunch. Okay, uh, there's a cheat sheet again. Right here. 62 to 68 foot pounds. I usually err on the side of caution when it comes to things like this. So I'll go high.
68 it is. I messed up with my math. Let's do this again. If I do the math correctly, I always end up here because, you know, two, skip two is going to take me back home. So start here, usually end here. All good. Didn't take much to tighten them, right? Okay, so that's that. Remember to unload your torque, your torque wrench. Okay, so this is the part I was talking about. With the dowels, the dowel pins in place. Am I the only one who calls these things dowel pins? Do most people just call them dowels? <laughs> anyway, see, can't just pull this plate out. And yeah, you guessed it, you can't just push it in either. But yeah, that's, that's done. At this point, we're pretty much ready to, um, to install the, the transmission on the backside of the, of the engine block or rather the engine assembly. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna be a little bit of a maneuvering, massaging process. So I'll probably shut the camera off for that, turn the camera off for that part. But we are good. This part is good. And I didn't talk about this in the beginning, but you should always inspect this to make sure that it is indeed good, in good condition. Any bends in the plate would usually cause an erratic reading from the camshaft sensor from the crankshaft sensor. The crankshaft sensor comes in right here and reads this plate over here. And you'll be able to see that once I install the, the transmission. Okay, good. I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about what I'd be doing in the next frames. So here's your signal plate, AKA ring gear, and in manual vehicles that would be called a, a flywheel. So what you have here, I want you to pay attention to these four holes that seem to have no partners. I'm not talking about the large ones. These are all coupled and I explained what that, um, that gap in there was for. It's supposed to have a stud, but I'll show that on the, on the damaged engine, by the way. But, um, so you have one, two, three, four, basically at six, 12, three and nine, right? Okay. Pay attention to those. Swing over to this side. This is your transmission. This is your bell housing. And this in here is your torque converter. And then on the torque converter, you'll notice that you have one, two, three, and four. So that's where you're supposed to couple this thing. And you're looking at it, trying to figure out, well, okay, great, but how do you fasten it? Because once you make this surface to this surface, you don't really have access from this side. You should do everything you need to do over here because it's gonna be game over. So you do have dowels and you have the holes for the dowels to go in. And where is it? Right here, right? Yeah. So you have that. But then, and I usually like setting these on, again, 6, 12, and just to have a mate as a straight mate, okay? And before I put it away, I want to show you this. So this hole over here, this is for the crankshaft sensor. So the crankshaft sensor comes in through this hole and reads this, this right here, signal through the signal plate. Okay, so I'll give you, I'll explain where the whole mystery comes from. And this is what's gonna happen. Remember the, the ring gear locking tool that I put down there? I'm gonna have to remove it because I want to turn this to match that. You don't want to ins just install things blindly. You want the, these holes to match the holes in the torque converter. So that's what I'm, I'm going to have to do. Put this camera down. Maybe I can even do it with, yeah, maybe. I'll, I'll get a better angle later, get uh, better footage later. But for now, this is all I want to do. Just remove this by lifting the motor up. There you go. 
we're not done with it yet. We're just putting it away for now so that I'll be able to turn this to, tw you know, to 12 o'clock basically. So for now, get my 19 millimeter, go to the front of the engine. Thought I had a smaller 19. I don't know where it is. Oh yeah, they're down there. So 19 millimeter right here. You see that says not tight because I didn't have a way to lock the the flywheel. I wasn't done with it. It might move, might not. I'm not sure, but I'll deal with it later. I know it's not torqued down right now. It's just moving because, well, it has to move. And that's what you want. You want your setup to turn pretty pretty smoothly. So that's it. I have it at pretty much the the four cardinal clock positions, right? Yeah. This one is almost all the way up, as centered as I can imagine it should be. It looks a little biased this way, but it's okay. We'll correct that. Not a big deal. And from what I've seen, yeah, I guess I've got enough torque to turn it and to correct it. But so what happens at this point is I will do my best to mate this. And what I usually do is come at it from the other side. Let me show you what happens and how you actually bolt it down. See these? This little short bolts. Yeah, they end up going here. And that's how you fasten this thing to your flywheel, to your ring gear, to make sure it doesn't go out. They're pretty short, and they actually come from the other side, like this. That's it. That's as much as you get to stick out. <laughs> so what I usually do is this. Since everything can turn pretty freely rather relatively freely in this case I usually go and get I use uh, Allen wrenches you absolutely you know definitely don't have to stick to my methods but I have a lot of these because of I go to wheel stores and ask for their boxes and for some reason I guess everybody's buying three-piece wheels over there but a lot of aftermarket wheel boxes come with these allen wrenches taped to the bottom so I just keep them for my tensioner jobs and who knows what so what I do is this bring it from the other side like this and while installing the torque converter while installing the transmission I just try to do this to find the the hole in the torque converter so I can have them relatively centered and then even if it's not exactly centered whenever I'm done bolting every well don't fully bolt everything together but whenever I'm ready I can just move it relatively easily if you had installed it the way I had it the first time with this thing all the way here it's almost impossible to to find the to get the torque converter to turn because it goes right in here and you don't really have much play because you don't really have any other way to to get to the torque converter apart from this hole over here. So if this hole is gone, you can't really turn anything that's on this side of the, of the plate, right? I hope that makes sense. I might have over explained that to seasoned engine assemblers or mechanics, but the kind of stuff I do is supposed to help everybody and make, and make this kind of work, automotive work seem less daunting than it really is, okay? Cool, or rather seem less daunting than, than it seems. I'm not trying to fool anybody. So what I'm gonna do is turn this. Hmm, what am I gonna do? Lift the engine and made it onto the transmission or the other way, you know, leave the transmission there or come the other way, lift the transmission. I think I'm gonna lift the engine, use the hoist, lift the engine, bring the engine this way and then just turn the transmission this way. And something I didn't talk about, but see this? <laughs> this was me being cheap, 
because I didn't want to lose too much uh, transmission fluid. I didn't want to replace anything. So apart from the little transmission fluid that's in the radiator, yeah, everything else has been saved. So and likewise, this thing is still connected. All the bolts are still in place, and I'm able to make it work without without losing too much transmission fluid. Okay, that's gonna be it. This time I'll really put the the phone uh, the camera down while I work on while I do the work. So what's been playing, what I'll be fast forwarding, or well, at least what I have fast forwarded, I was listening to YouTube so I'm going to fast forward while I'm working on that. But basically what I was doing is this, installing the bell housing bolts, you have 19 millimeter, you have 6 of those, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over here. Then you have 4 of them that are 17 millimeters. These are the oil pan. I just placed those, uh, didn't really bolt them in. My advice is not to bother with the bottom ones yet because if the oil pan is coming in crooked for any reason and you tighten it, you might end up breaking some bolts. So I usually just do my best, install the, uh, the block ones, the engine ones, then the oil pan ones like these will be installed much later. But that's not really the focus of right now. What I wanted to show was the other thing I was working on was coming here to the bottom. I need a flashlight. Okay, I also wanted to show that I came to the bottom and if I can get the light there, there you go. I was doing my best to ensure that everything was lined up. Can I get that? Oh, there you go. The light works. To make sure that everything was lined up. And using this Allen wrench basically kept everything aligned. So right now you can see it's more or less centered, but I'll just do this. Did you see me moving it to the left? And I can make it a little more exaggerated, but pretty much. This is what gets it done. So right now what I'm going to do is this. Get those um, flat torque converter bolts that I was talking about and just install those. And then uh, this might also be a sped up video, I'm not sure. But I'll just show what I'm doing on the outside. Uh, on the, on the, what do you call it, crank wheels, crank, crank pulley bolt side as well as what I'm doing here to tighten it. Okay, so that that's all that's going to be. I'm going to probably turn this around and just get it in a better position for video. Then we'll keep talking. <laughs> 